Indirect method cash flows. The following financial statements were provided by Marvin Company for the financial year ended 31st of December. We are asked to calculate using the indirect method the cash flows and operating activities. So the first step that we need to do for calculating under the indirect method is to record our net profit as the first line. So the net profit is going to be transformed into the cash flows from operations number. So the question tells us in the additional information that the net profit for the period is 47,890. So we write this down first, that's our first line. Next, the section we're going to do is permanent differences. These are differences that will never result in a cash flow. They are essentially accrual adjustments. The types of permanent differences that we have include things like depreciation, gains and losses on the sale of non-current assets. So we need to firstly calculate how much depreciation did we have for the period. So we can do one of two methods for how to calculate this depreciation. The first method is known as the shortcut method. The shortcut method has some rules and the rules are that there need to have been no sales and no revaluations during the period for that non-current asset. That's because sales and revaluations result in a write down of accumulated depreciation, which means that we can't just simply take the difference between the closing accumulated depreciation and the opening accumulated depreciation. So we need to check the additional information to see if there's been any sales or revaluations of our non-current assets. If that's the case that there have been sales and revaluations, we have to do what's known as the long way. The long way involves reconstructing the T accounts for accumulated depreciation for each of those non-current assets. So this question has buildings and equipment. There are two non-current assets. So we can have a look, can we do the shortcut for either of these? So we look in the additional information and we see that, so for equipment, there was some equipment that was sold during the period and that's in the second last additional information item. For buildings, there's no sale of buildings and we can confirm this as well by checking on the balance sheet and we can see that the opening and closing balances, the buildings account is 250,000. There's been, so no sales, no revaluation of buildings. That means we can use the shortcut method so that's the closing balance of accumulated depreciation buildings, 70,000, minus the opening balance of 50,000. So that gives us 20,000 of depreciation. Equipment, we have to use the long way because there's been a sale. That sale of equipment results in a write down of accumulated depreciation. So we can't take the difference between the closing balance of accumulated depreciation and opening balance Instead, we need to do the T account. So the T account for equipment, we're going to put in the opening balance for accumulated depreciation on the credit side, 42,000. On the debit side, we're going to put a write down and that write down is going to be for the accumulated depreciation written off due to the sale. And we were told in the additional information that the equipment had an original cost of 40,000 and a carrying amount of 33,000. To calculate how much depreciation that we have accumulated and we need to write down, it's that 40,000 minus the 33,000 carrying amount. So that gives us seven of accumulated depreciation. So we go into the debit side of the accumulated depreciation equipment account and we write in that there's a write-off uh, on the sale of, of equipment for seven. Then we put in the closing balance from the balance sheet, 70,000. So this will give us a total on the debit side of 77,000. So we minus the opening balance, 42,000, and this gives us depreciation expense, 35,000. For buildings, we can also do 
the T account and for accumulated depreciation. So we can set this up with on the credit side, opening balance 50,000. On the closing balance, it's going to be debit side 70,000. So closing 70 minus opening 50 will give us 20,000 for depreciation. Now we can calculate the total depreciation of the buildings and the equipment. So 20 for buildings, 35 for equipment. This gives us a total depreciation of 55,000. So we can then go back to the indirect method statement and we can add depreciation expense 55,000. Why do we add it? It's because inside of net profit, we would have previously subtracted depreciation expense to result in that net profit number. So if we want to reverse depreciation, we have to do the opposite of what was previously done. So we add depreciation expense back to the net profit to reverse it out and to get towards a cash flow number. The next adjustment that we need to do is if there is any gain or loss on the sale of that equipment. So we need to calculate this and we're going to do this through constructing the journal entry for the sale. So we're going to use some information from that, the additional information section. So we debit cash 37,000. So we were told in the question, that's what we received for the sale of the equipment. We debit accumulated depreciation, which we've just calculated in the previous step to be 7,000. We then leave a blank line and that will be where we put the gain or loss. The last line of the journal entry is credit equipment 40,000. So we can calculate whether we have a gain or a loss by taking the difference between that equipment cost of 40,000 minus the 7,000 accumulated depreciation and minus 37,000 cash. So what we find is that the debits exceeds the credits and so it's going to be a gain on sale to balance out this journal entry. So we're going to put in credit gain on sale of equipment and it's for $4,000. So we can now go back to our indirect statement and we can put in minus gain on sale of equipment 4,000. Why is it a minus? That's because previously the gain would have been added into net profit. In order to reverse it, we need to do the opposite. We subtract the gain on sale. Now we can move into the next section of the indirect calculations. This is the timing differences section. These items will result in a cash flow. Their revenue and expense is temporarily separated from the cash flow. So what we'd use for this section's calculations is the current assets and the current liabilities, except any if there are any dividends payable or except if there is any short-term loans. We would leave those items for the financing activity section. So what we do is we go to the balance sheet and we look for all of our current assets. We start off with accounts receivable. And what we're going to do is take the closing balance and minus the opening balance. So accounts receivable, 77,000. The closing balance minus the opening balance, 64,000. And we're going to use our click clad rule as well to help us to calculate this. So click clad, if it's a current liability increasing, we add. If it's a current asset decreasing, we add. So we can see that accounts receivable is increasing. So it doesn't follow click cloud. That means it's a subtract. And the difference between the amounts is 13,000. So we go into our timing differences section and we write minus increase in accounts receivable and we put it in brackets, 13,000. So we're removing the sales that are not for cash. The next item that we have in our current asset section is allowance for doubtful debts. This is a contract asset, so it's credit natured. So it's going to follow the liability part of click clad. So we take opening balance, take that minus that away from the closing balance. So 11,550 is the closing balance minus 9,600. 
So the count is increasing. It's increased by 1,950. So current liability increasing. So it follows that liability part. We're going to add. It follows that in ClickClad. So we're going to write in add increase in allowance for doubtful debts, 1,950. The next current asset that we're going to look at is inventory. So comparing the closing balance with the opening balance, it's increased. So it's not following ClickClad, so it's going to be a subtract. And it's increased by 33,950. So we write in minus increase in inventory, 33,950 in brackets. Next, we look at prepaid expenses. So prepaid expenses has decreased over the period. So it does follow ClickCloud. So we're going to add 12,140 is the closing balance minus the opening balance, 16,540. So prepaid expenses will be 4,400 and we write in add the decrease in prepaid expenses, 4,400. Then we look to our liabilities and we have only one current liability that's accounts payable. It's had an ending balance 58,000 and an opening balance 45,000. So it's increased over the period. It follows the click cloud rule. So it's going to be an add and it's for 13,000. So we put this into our timing differences, add increase in accounts payable, 13,000. So that's our final timing difference. There are no other current liabilities. So we add together and have all of our timing differences, all of our permanent differences, and we adjust our net profit. And this will result in net cash inflows in operations of 71,290. So we've transformed our accruals based net profit number of 47,890 into a cash flow number, cash flows from operations, 71,290.